Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. So I guess most people are kind of still looking at uh, West Texas and uh, Brent crude to get a real understanding as to uh, the power of global demand. Um, but for now, let's keep a quick look on the uh, equity markets. And you can see that we've, we've had a bit of a rebound on the US 30 from, from the lows that we hit there. On, uh, on, on at the end of Friday's session. We had a, an okay session yesterday, still below potential um, resistance at 17,361. We're almost get close to getting a death cross there on the moving averages. Other technicals are relatively neutral with the MACD providing a sell signal um, as it's crossing the zero line. Um, and as we're get, getting closer to 17,361, there might be a little bit of short-term potential uh, resistance for us to break through. And that was a, a high uh, that was reached in September 19, 2014, that has historically shown uh, to be a little bit strategically important as a, as a potential resistance level. So that's something to keep your eye on. Uh, I'm looking at the Germany 30 and UK 100 on my other charts. Germany 30 has had a short spike this morning, but it's really struggled to get any traction as well. So that's currently where we are with the US markets uh, looking a little bit top heavy right now. So moving on to the UK 100. You can see from yesterday's candle that it, it, it managed to just briefly break above the previous uh, day's wick, but then it got pushed right back down. What's really important here, it got pushed back down to 60.73, which has been a potential uh, resistance slash support level for a, little, for a little while. And we're still pretty much bang on there right now. Now, on the intraday charts, you're just seeing the UK 100 just ever so slightly poke its head above there again. Uh, but you know, looking at the tips of these wicks right here, there's obviously selling interest round about these levels. Uh, and the fact that we're so close to this uh, specific support slash resistance level, I think it's significant. We're very close, however, to uh, po posting a bullish crossover on the MACD, whereas the other technicals are relatively neutral, with the slow stochastic not really going into oversold territory at that point. Um, it'd be interesting to see if we can break above there, but the fact that we've got these little, little mini resistance levels pinged up across here is going to add a little bit of weight. And obviously, you can see where, we, where we've come from um, with the UK markets, you know, kind of getting, getting above 7,000 at one point there uh, earlier on in the year. Uh, we're substantially further away from that right now. So moving on to the Japan 225, um, still trying to recover from this really ugly candle we posted on Friday. We do have a slight hammer formation that was posted yesterday, and that's quite significant because it's bounced off potential support at 18,648. Uh, and it's a very clear hammer formation at the, at the bottom of this kind of downtrend. It's supposed to hammer at the lows. It's supposed to be a reversal signal. Uh, but we are in the middle of two ranges right now, 19,104 and 18,648. So then having a quick look at dollar yen, uh, dollar yen is not really doing a huge amount after that horrible Friday candle in between two ranges as well. 120 spot 55, 121 spot 87. The US dollar flatlining actually uh, across most of the other major markets. Uh, looking at West Texas crude, uh, again, looking pretty, pretty ugly. Oh, no matter of fact, that's not far enough across. Um, 35.30 is where we are. Uh, still trading below potential resistance. The longer term potential uh, support is at uh, 26.93, or just around about $27. And the way this trend is right now, we do have crude oil inventories due tomorrow as well, of course, but that's something to, uh, to keep your eye on there anyway, uh, just to give you a bit of a flavor of how things are going. Uh, but we're quite far away from there just now, but we are on the wrong side of uh, potential support, which is currently broken. So then moving on to gold, uh, gold is not doing, uh, is not doing, uh, sorry, gold is kind of moving a little bit higher up there just now, around about $1,072, actually getting a technical breakout above this potential sloping support, breaking up above potential resistance. That's actually quite a significant move because it's been quite a while since we've seen two candles in such succession like to pull some decent gains on gold, uh, which is quite good. So the next potential resistance would be around about $1,100 if it manages to gain momentum. Um, it's broken above the 21 period SMA, broken through that um, sloping potential resistance and the horizontal uh, resistance as well. And the other technicals are relatively neutral, indicating there's still further room for uh, momentum to build. So moving on to your dollar and GBP USD. Euro dollar has managed to bounce on Friday and Monday of potential support 1.0819. It's not really doing a huge amount today, potentially capped by that 55 period SMA. I'm looking at the intraday charts, it's just, uh, just flatlining so far this morning. And to finish up with GBP USD, uh, just crawling around about 1.4860. 
not doing a huge amount again, <clears throat> consolidating around a bit at this point. The question is, is it consolidating for a rebound or is it consolidating to break through one spot 48.60, iron up one spot 46.40 as an next potential support? It's obviously a question for you guys at home to answer yourselves. So economic data wise, there's US GDP due at 1.30 UK time and then existing home sales at 3.00. And then, uh, even though it's getting close to Christmas, uh, Wednesday does come with a whole host of macro data events. You do have a UK GDP, durable goods from the US, uh, personal income from the US, uh, the Consumer uh, Sentiment Survey, University of Michigan Sentiment Index, new home sales, and of course, crude oil inventories for you crude traders out there. So guys, keep your eye on the chart forum, make insights part of your layout going forward, and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.